So like in the last video, we completed the installation for our Rust programming language. Now we have to check over here if Cargo actually exists. So if I type in Cargo hyphen hyphen version, you can see I get an error and says Rust up could not choose a version of Cargo to run because one wasn't specified explicitly and no default is configured. So what we have to do is help run. So it says run des uh, Rust up default stable to download the latest stable release of Rust and set it up as your default tool chain. So what we're going to do is just going to copy this and say rust up default and then we're going to have stable and this is going to make it our default rust um, you know program. So we're just going to have it downloaded over here. It's going to take some time, but hopefully it will uh, complete. Okay, downloading component Clippy. Cargo is downloaded and we're downloading rust docs as well. This is the documentation so you could see it locally and 91% completed. Now we have Rust STD. This is going to install it and hopefully we could see it locally installed as well. So it should be done quickly. Perfect. Now we have Rust C and this should be installed as well. The moment you could see I went back to the Rust website and you could see that remember that we had our get started and over here you saw we had you know this all things that we covered up in the last video but you could see that we also have learn and uh, there was this you know the rustlings course and then there's this the standard library and edition guide so guide to the rust editions comprehensive guide to the rust standard library APS what we do is read the book this is just for you know the rust programming language and this is the website where you know has everything what we need so when we have hello world, you can see this was the hello world uh, program. So we're going to check how, how this works. So let's see. So you can see at the moment, Rust C is downloaded and everything seems to work. Um, so default toolchain set to stable x86, 64 PC windows and MSVC. So it looks great. And if I, cl you know, clear everything. And if I do now, um, you know, cargo hyphen version you can see now we have the latest version of cargo installed and that means if we go to this application which is in my same directory main.rs if I go and say cargo and I say uh, main.rs you can see running main.rs requires hyphen z script so uh, let's look into the doc and see how we could compile this so you can see over here we need to compile it using Rust C and then main.rs. So let's see if we have Rust C. So Rust C hyphen hyphen version, and we have Rust C as well. So we have Rust C and then we have main.rs. And when we did that, you can see we have an executable created right in our directory, and that's great. And we also have this pdb also created as well, main.pdb. Okay, so now what we could do is we could just run it. So let's go back to the doc and see now, if we do dot slash main, we could see our executable. So we'll just say dot slash main. And this is just basically calling our executable. And you can see right now, this is not going to work because we are in CMD. But if we worked on some other uh, browser, it would have worked. So we could just say exe and then main.exe I wrote. And you can see hello world printing out. So this means we have completely successfully created this and compiled it. And, you know, you can see it working as well. So you can see over here, uh, you know, rust c main.rs. And then you'd see dot slash uh, on Windows, enter the command like that. So uh, generally, what you would do is dot backslash and then main dot exe, I believe. And this is going to work. Or you could just say main and it would still work. So that's great. Uh, that's really good. And you can see over here, I mean, it did it with exe and it says hello world. So uh, if hello world did print, congratulations, you're officially written a Rust program that makes you a Rust programmer. Welcome. So we have anatomy of Rust program and all that stuff that. Uh, we looked into this. Uh, hello, Cargo. So remember, Cargo is Rust build system and package manager. So it's a build system and package. Most Rustations, I don't know how to say that, uh, use this tool to manage their Rust projects because um, Cargo handles a lot of tasks for you, such as building your code, downloading the libraries your code depends on, and building those libraries. We call the libraries that your code needs dependencies. Okay, so the simplest Rust programs like the one we've written so far don't have any dependencies. So we, if we have, had built the Hello World program with Cargo, it would 
only use the part of cargo that handles building your code. As you write more complex Rust programs, you'll add dependencies, and if you start a project using cargo, adding dependencies will be much easier to do. So basically, uh, you'll see that uh, you know Cargo is a package manager, and because the vast majority of Rust projects use Cargo, the rest of this book assumes that you're using Cargo too. Cargo comes installed with Rust if you used the official installers discussed in the installation section. If you installed Rust through some other means, check whether Cargo is installed by entering the following on your terminal. We did this, and it told us that we have it. So creating a project with Cargo, and we could create a project now with Cargo. So let's uh, let's try this step as well. So. Over here, you can see these are the files that have been created, but I'm actually going to cross all of this out and delete it, okay? And now we're going to go back to this Visual Studio Code, and you can see that this is no longer there. So we have an empty space over here, and now let's go back to our CMD, and we're going to do some of these experiments, uh, which are, you know, in the documentation as well. So if I go here, you could see that I could actually make this go down over here. So it says creating a project with cargo. Right now we're in our directory. If I go here, where there's nothing is going to be in the dir. So like directory, it says nothing. So what we do is we did cargo new hello cargo. So so it says navigate back to your projects directory or whether wherever you decided to store your code, and then on any operating system run the following. So this is you know operating system independent. So we just say cargo and then with space new and then we have the name of the project which is hello cargo if i do this and press enter you can see created binary application hello cargo package now let's see if i uh, look into this look at this it created a folder and it has a lot of things inside of it so we have a cargo.toml we have a dot git ignore we have a source folder and we have dot git so that's for git initialization for git github and then the source we have main.rs and you guess it it's going to be that you know um, so essentially, if you go to code dot, you could see that it opens it up. You could see you have a hello, and then in the source, you could see main.rs, and this is our hello world inside this. So this is good. Let's go back, and cargo.toml just tells us that this is the name of the you know project, and this is the version, this is the edition, and also other things over here are there. Dependencies, nothing over here so far, but you know this is our toml file, and then this is the git ignore says slash target. Uh, wouldn't go so basically this is the entire cargo project so um, now we are back here and I could just go and navigate inside this so I'd say CD hello world hello cargo now if I do dir you could see that we have the um, cargo.toml and we have the source folder and in the source folder we have our you know project so let's go back here and you can see CD hello world and then the first command creates a new project and a directory and project called hello cargo we've named our project hello cargo and uh, cargo creates its files in a directory of the same name okay so we've named our project hello cargo and the cargo create and cargo creates its files in a directory of the same name so so that basically mm, tells us like you know all of that so git is a common version control system you can see that uh, you can use uh, you can change cargo new to use a different version control system or no longer control uh, system by using this uh, flag run cargo new so you basically have configuration to either either include that dot git file or not um, so open cargo dot toml and you can see all this stuff that we just explored and you could also see that the file is in the toml tom's obvious minimal language format which is cargo's configuration format and then we have the hello world program right here building and running a cargo project so let's uh, run this cargo project we're in this directory so again we're back in this directory so what we're gonna say is let's go back here uh, which is in our file which is right here so what we're gonna say is we're gonna say cargo build so I'll say cargo and then space build if I do this you can see compiling cargo uh, uh, you know that version and then it's in uh, the projects hello cargo finished dev and you can see it's done okay so now you can see the exact same stuff over here and then um you know um now that you now this is completed the command creates an executable file in the target slash debug slash hello cargo so basically it created an executable already automatically so let's just review and see it so over here in the target folder you can say slash in the debug folder you could see that it created Okay, so in the debug folder, uh, I think in the 
um, yeah so I'll this one in the build folder you see so not in the anything so just so basically in the target folder you have the debug folder and inside you see the hello dot hello underscore cargo dot exe so this is the uh, you know essentially your your executable on Windows rather than in your target direct uh, your current directory because the default build is a def debug build right cargo puts the binary in a directory called named debug you can run the executable with the command so essentially if you want to run it you could just go into it and just call it so essentially you have to go right now where let's see there so we have to go inside of uh, target folder so we just say cd uh, target okay we could say slash again or back so if I do backslash so now we're in target folder and we have to go in again in the debug folder so we'll say debug you can see over there okay now we're in the debug folder let me just max make, make the screen a little bigger okay so inside here the last thing what we have to do is we just have to um, you know just run it so we're just gonna say um, hello and we're just gonna say hello underscore cargo and this is your hello world program so I believe that's pretty much it uh, so far it's uh, you know cargo run okay so this was uh, you know if all goes well hello world should print on the terminal uh, we just built a project with cargo build and ran it in with uh, this thing we can use we can also use cargo run to compile the code and then run the resultant executable all in one command so uh, you know this is also possible by just uh, having cargo run like this so you can see it did the whole thing no matter which uh, directory you are in if you go back cdgd I mean I'm going back uh, so I'm in the rust folder now if you go in here you see hello underscore car but we have to be inside hello underscore car cargo so if I sorry so go inside hello underscore cargo and then I know that everything is done so I could just say cargo run this is gonna uh, build and execute it so you could see building finished and then running and then you could see hello world so you see that hello uh, underscore cargo has completed successfully and uh, cargo also provides a command called cargo check this command quickly checks your code to check make sure it compiles but doesn't produce an executable make sure it compiles okay so this is basically uh, used to check if it compiles successfully so we just take cargo check and says checking and it finished so it doesn't create the executable but uh, but it doesn't produce the executable an executable. so perfect and that's the recap and um, basically some of the conventions here um, so git clone examples uh, some projects CD some pro and cargo build so basically there's some um, you know other things that you could look at I don't even know if this is actually example I don't know example I think this is um, just an example it doesn't really mean anything so really this is nothing um, but you could see that you know it gives you conventions how to work with it so pretty much that was it with this video we learned how to uh, you know compile a rust file and then we also learned how to uh, create a, a rust pro, pro project with cargo and all these other things and hopefully we'll uh, tune into the next video uh, we're gonna actually navigate to programming a guessing game so stick around and see you around